Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at electroluminescent wire, or EL wire as it's more commonly used, and I've got a whole load of it here. Now this is going to be for a Christmas display. This video has been made at the beginning of November. Obviously this will be uh, made into something shortly and then uh, stuck up for December. But uh, before that we'll just have a look at the uh, what this stuff actually is made of and how it works, and obviously the ways in which you can actually use it. Now electroluminescent wire, or EL wire, it's a very simple technology, and let's say it's just this uh, thin wire. We'll show it uh, lit up later on. And uh, what's inside here is uh, basically a wire in the middle here, which we'll just draw in uh, purple there. So central copper wire there. And on the outside of the wire, there's a phosphor coating. So on the whole outside of this, just draw it in green there. You've got a phosphor coating, and it's in contact with the wire, obviously. So surrounds the wire on all sides. And again here we're drawing it far bigger than of course it really is. And then on the outside of the phosphor coating there are an additional wire, or in some cases two wires, and they're basically spiralled around it so uh, the wires sort of just go around the outside in that sort of strange type of fashion. And again they're all in contact uh, with the outside of phosphor coating. And it's important to note the wires aren't actually touching together because there's one in the middle, phosphor covering, and then the wires around the outside. So they're always separate. And even at the end, there's no actual connection between the two. And then over the outside, obviously, there's a uh, plastic covering, which just basically encloses the entire thing. So you don't actually touch it. Obviously, it stops it being damaged. And in some cases, the plastic coating can actually have colours in it as well, depending on exactly what colour of wire you want. Now, in terms of actually powering this stuff, uh, it does need uh, fairly specific power requirements. And all you do is basically at the end here, take the two wires, so there's the middle core wire, and then the outer one, or in some case ones, just to bring it out to the end like that. And then between the ends here, you're going to connect a power supply, which is typically in the region of around 100 volts AC. And uh, frequency does obviously tend to vary, but uh, typically in the region of, uh, say, 1,000 hertz or so, or in fact, uh, 1 kilohertz. And that can vary a bit. It's not uh, hugely critical. And again, the voltage can vary a bit as well, but uh, typically around 100 volts is what's required. So you can't just get this and shove it onto a normal DC power supply or a battery, because obviously it's not going to work. And uh, of course, you do need a particular driver unit now, the benefits of the EL wire are that it's very cheap because there's really nothing in it. It's just a wire coated in phosphor, another wire and a plastic tube. This is a 10 metre roll. This is only about four pounds something. This came from Banggood, but you can get it from eBay and AliExpress and all the usual Chinese suppliers. Now, you could, of course, uh, just make up a circuit yourself just to create the voltage here, but it's not necessary because the Chinese have already made these things like this. This is an anonymous black box, but it does happen to be the correct thing we want. And all that's in here basically is a oscillator circuit and a little uh, transformer just to boost up the voltage. So this one's designed for a 12 volt DC input, so on this red and black wire we've got here. And then the output here is the uh, 100 volts or so AC, and that will connect directly onto the wire. Now when you buy this, it generally comes with at least one connector on the end like this, so we can just plug in and uh, obviously make it work. Polarity doesn't matter because of course AC, so it doesn't matter either way. And the other end of the wire, in this case, just has a little plastic cap on there. Maybe just to protect the end, I'm going to go into people's fingers in, because this isn't going to probably kill anybody, but putting 100 volts AC in your finger, you would certainly feel that, so not recommended. This is totally potted, so we're not going to be opening it, but say there's nothing in here other than just basically a simple oscillator and a little tiny transformer. And say so it runs on 12 volts, you can use these in vehicles and things as well, that's primarily why they're a 12 volt supply, but in theory you could pretty much make a driver unit there for virtually any input voltage. Now you can uh, cut this stuff and join it, which is handy because we don't necessarily want 10 metres uh, in a single length. And if cutting it, it's just a question of uh, stripping back the outer plastic tubing. The inner core wire, of course, you can just solder to directly. And then the outer fine wires, uh, in theory, you could solder to them, but the usual method is to uh, fold those around the outside of the tube, put some copper foil tape on the outside, uh, such as uh, this stuff here, self-adhesive on one side, so you just wrap a bit around, put the wires on the outside, then you can solder to that, 
and then a bit of heat shrink over the top to uh, seal it all together. And you can get this in various colours. We've got some uh, orange fluorescent yellow there, which is actually green when it's lit up. Uh, we've also got an orange one, some more uh, of that yellow one there. Uh, this one here, which uh, might be red. Yes, I think that's red. And we've got this pink one as well. And they've also got this one, which is supposed to be white, although it looks more pink in this situation. So a great load of it there. So uh, what sort of seven different rolls of it. And also got a whole load of the driver units as well. Now these driver units are designed to drive up to 10 metres of length, which is basically what this roll is. You can uh, cut it down and uh, drive less with it. Generally as you increase the length the brightness will diminish, so if you want it brighter then you can uh, put shorter bits on. And another warning about these things is that the different colours are usually completely different levels of brightness. The green one is usually brighter, and then things like the white and whatever are not, because they're either filtering the colour or have got some extra stuff in there to convert the actual colour that comes off of it into something else. Advantages though, uh, this stuff say is very cheap, much cheaper than the equivalent to LEDs in a line. And because it's all in a single piece, the actual illumination is continuous along the entire length and also all around the wire, so there's no actual gaps as you would get with LEDs. And this uses massively less current than, say, an equivalent length of LEDs would do, so uh, much less power consumption. So let's uh, see if we can power this up and see actually what it looks like. Now to power this up, say we just need to put 12 volts uh, DC into the end of this, so we'll just strip those wires there, and we we'll just use the supply up on the shelf here. Now because this isn't uh, desperately bright, we will need to turn off uh, a fair amount of the lighting here. So these are going to be used for a Christmas display, but it's going to be outside at night, so total brightness isn't really a big concern. So uh, we'll just turn that off for a start. Uh, we'll also need to turn off the other usual lights as well, otherwise we're not going to see a great deal at all. So uh, while well, the camera adjusts, we'll uh, just make the appropriate connections here. We'll get rid of the uh, leaflet as well, so you don't need to see that. Now this is the green one, which is uh, by far the brightest choice. But we'll have a look at all of the colours so you can see what those are actually like. So we'll just connect up to the uh, power supply here. So connected up to the uh, supply there, and we just set obviously to the uh, 12 volts DC that we actually wanted. And we can then switch on. And because he's run at a fairly high frequency of AC in the region of a thousand hertz or so, these do actually make a noise. So I don't know if we can actually get this on the camera. So that's sort of a buzzing noise there. Again, this is going to be outside. So doesn't really matter particularly. And see it's uh, glowing away there fairly well. This is, say, is the uh, green one. And you can bend this to pretty much any shape. I mean there's no particular uh, restriction in terms of what you can do with it there. So that's all fine. So that's the green one there. And uh, let's just have a look at some of the other colours as well. Here's a sort of orangey uh, coloured one here. Get this put together. And there's the sort of orangey, uh, well, more yellowy really than uh, orange. Notice it's quite a bit dimmer than the green one we just saw there. And that's just due to the different chemicals and things that they've put in, or maybe coloured plastic or something that filters out some of the light. Here we have a red one, possibly. Well, it's more orange really, but uh, nevertheless it's uh, lighting up reasonably well. Got some more green there, I've seen that already. That's another red, so I don't want to uh, look at that. This is supposed to be pink. So let's go in there with that one. Yep, that's a rather horrible uh, magenta sort of colour. Notice if the uh, frequency of this actually does vary a bit depending on which one we've plugged in. It's due to do with things like the length and whatever. As a bit, it's uh, not a particularly well controlled oscillator, it just basically puts out a signal so you can get the AC from it. So a sort of a lurid uh, pink colour. And then finally we've got the white one, or that's uh, described as white. Again it looks a bit sort of uh, pink when it's actually turned off. Let's just remove that tab so we can fan it out a bit. And there's the white one. So it's sort of a cold uh, bluish white. 
but uh, again it's all there, pretty much the same there. And say so you can join this together and of course cut say, the white one and join a bit of pink on at the end, it's all uh, fairly compatible with itself. So a quick look at there, some electroluminescent wire. And uh, this stuff uh, in normal lighting as we've got now isn't actually that bright or impressive because anyway, this is in the off position. If I turn it on, that's on and that's not. So yeah, not terribly impressive in uh, normal illumination. So we're going to be using this outside at night, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, in terms of current consumption, this is a 10 metre length with the up to 10 metre driver. And if we turn that on there, you'll see it's using only about 113 milliamps or so at the 12 volt DC, so very low current consumption. But of course, uh, that's why you're only getting a relatively low brightness out of the thing. So, say so next time, we'll have a look at the uh, actual putting it together. But until then, thanks for watching.